I am a master of phoniness. I'm a charlatan by craft. Jim Monroe is a magician, and there was a time in his life when he thought believing in an all-powerful God was incredibly silly. I said, God, if you are real, then I need you to bring me back behind the curtain. I need you to show me how it works, and I need you to make this so real to me that I cannot ignore it. God did that in a very big and scary kind of way. This is GPS, God, People, Stories. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. And before we get to the story, uh, just a quick word to let you know that the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team is ministering in Baton Rouge and Dallas. Chaplains from the Rapid Response Team are sharing the hope and love of Jesus with people who are hurting, who are confused, angry. Uh, The common denominator between them all is that they're looking for answers. Uh, As you think about the Rapid Response Team, please lift these chaplains up in prayer. Yeah, and you'll hear from one of those chaplains right after Jim Monroe shares his story. GPS. God. People. Stories. Jim Monroe had wanted to be a pro baseball player, but a shoulder injury in college ended that dream. Eventually, he discovered a fascination with magic. I remember the first moment when I became completely blown away and intrigued with the idea of being a magician. And that's what he is today. In fact, it's how he makes his living. Jim describes being a magician like this. It is the most fun thing in the world to me. I tend to like questions a lot more than answers. And what a magic trick does is it forces you into a place of questioning and it pulls the rug of reality out from underneath you to where you're literally left in a place where you don't know what is happening. You don't know what's happening if you're the one watching the magic. If you're the one doing the magic, you obviously do know what the trick is. And Jim knew a lot of tricks to get people to believe something was real when it wasn't. As a result, he, like a lot of other magicians, was skeptical. And that skepticism made it hard for him to believe in an all-powerful God. He called belief in such a God incredibly silly. And when I talk to people that would go to church, I can remember thinking that they were just falling for a simple magic trick. It's like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain controlling everything. There came a point in Jim's life though when that skepticism began to weaken. I am a master of phoniness. I'm a a charlatan by craft. But I began to ask myself the big God question. I said, God, if you are real, then I need you to bring me back behind the curtain. I need you to show me how it works. And I need you to make this so real to me that I cannot ignore it. That is exactly what God did. He revealed himself to Jim in a way that Jim could definitely not ignore. It was a process and it began in a doctor's office one day in 2009. I will never forget the day this man walks into my room and he said, Mr. Monroe, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have, you have cancer. Remember, Jim said a minute ago that a good magic trick pulls the rug out from under you and leaves you in a place where you literally don't know what's happening. Well, that's exactly what the cancer diagnosis did to him. My wife and I were, we were in a bad place. God, where are you? I guess you aren't that great. I had been married for five years. I had just a three-year-old girl and a two-year-old little boy, and I needed, I needed more time with my family. I needed more time. I was thinking to myself, man, my time is running out. I am dying of cancer. The kind of cancer Jim was facing was leukemia. The cancer doctor looked at me and said, Mr. Monroe, he said, we cannot cure you of your disease. There is something, however, that we would like to try. It's called a bone marrow transplant. The problem with your body is that your white blood cells are making bad copies of bad copies. And what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to find someone in the world whose DNA matches yours close enough to grow a brand new immune system, a brand new blood system from scratch. We're gonna substitute someone else's perfect blood on your behalf so that you can live again. To find that perfect match, Jim's doctors worked with the National Bone Marrow Donor Program. It had seven million people on its database. There was one perfect match for me, just one. It was a 19-year-old female. They said, Mr. Monroe, your bone marrow transplant is scheduled for April 23rd. 
The nurses celebrate your new birth in the hospital. Literally, I was going to be born anew. Before that could happen, though, Jim would have to go through a powerful round of chemotherapy. That's used to weaken or outright destroy cancer cells and unhealthy bone marrow. During that time, he recorded some messages from his hospital bed. Here's one. It's been hard to deal with right now. Peyton is three years old and Gavin is two years old. My two babies. Should this take my life early? I love you. And here's part of another message he recorded from his bed. I really am scared. I'm really trying not to be fearful, but I am fearful. I'm trying to be strong for my wife and for my, for my family. But uh, I'm pretty scared. It was scary, but Jim made it through the chemotherapy. And then I'll never forget on April 23rd, they brought this bag of blood into my room and everyone was hoping in that moment that my body would receive that new life, that new blood. His body did receive it. The transplant was a success. I sit here today 100% completely cancer free. And when they look at my blood today, they see literally someone else living on the inside of me. They see XX chromosome. I'm reminded of a verse in Galatians 2. It says, uh, it's no longer I who live, but it's someone else who lives on the inside of me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith. The impact Jim's cancer fight has had on his faith in Jesus Christ is nothing short of profound. John 17, 3, it says, this is eternal life, knowing you, God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I'm fully convinced of the claims of Jesus as a skeptical person and as an illusionist. I know that the God of the universe has brought me back behind the curtain just like I asked him to. Cancer was how he did it through my life. And there's a spiritual cancer that's eating us away on the inside and we're all longing, we're all begging for someone to step in and to save us from that condition. Knows I'm a broken man. These tired bones, they can barely stand. Jesus is the only one who can save you from that spiritual cancer that Jim Monroe's talking about. Are you ready for Jesus to save you? We can tell you more. Just go to BillyGrahamRadio.org and click on Grow Your Faith. You'll see it at the top of the page. That's BillyGrahamRadio.org. Your love, your love, when it opened my eyes I was a dead man walking till you gave me life We mentioned earlier that chaplains from the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team are ministering to people in Dallas and Baton Rouge. You're going to hear more about that work in just a minute. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I read a fellow died in the hospital because he was given the wrong kind of blood. Billy Graham. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son shed on the cross for us was the right type of blood to cleanse and infuse every person in this room tonight with life and life eternal. It'll cleanse from every sin, no matter what it is. We cannot do it ourselves. It's impossible. You can work all your life and do good works and pay money to the church, but that won't justify you. The only thing that will justify you in heaven or upon earth or in hell is the blood of Jesus Christ. And justification means just as though you'd never sinned. Wouldn't it be wonderful as though you'd never committed a sin in your whole life? Well, that's what can happen tonight when you come to the cross. That's the power of the blood. And now back to the hosts of GPS, Phil Fleischman and Jim Kirkland. The Billy Graham Rapid Response Team has deployed crisis-trained chaplains to Baton Rouge and Dallas. They're ministering to protesters, police officers, and other people who are working through all kinds of emotions that are tied to the recent events in those cities. One of those chaplains is Kelly Burke. Here he is from Baton Rouge. We go out into the streets and, and to the hurt, wherever that hurt and that need may be. And we demonstrate with open arms and pure hearts and minds. We open 
ourselves up and, and let God's love pour through us to them because he is near the brokenhearted. He is here. Can we ask you to be praying for Kelly as well as for the other chaplains and the people they're ministering to in Baton Rouge and Dallas? And actually, could you also be praying for everyone in Minneapolis, too? You can find more stories about the work of the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team by going to their website, billygram.org slash RRT, or you can find them on Facebook. And we are also on Facebook here at GPS. To find us, just look for Billy Graham Radio. And if you like what you're hearing on GPS, be sure to tell your friends or your family about it. Thank you for listening. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Jim Kirkland. GPS, God People's Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. I was a dead man walking to Lord.